In this video, we're going to set up an experiment to do reciprocal grafting of tomatoes. Uh, in this case, we're going to use a Peace Vine cherry tomato for our rootstock and our scion, and we're going to use a True Black Brandywine for our rootstock and our scion. And what I mean by that is we're going to do reciprocal grafting, where we're going to try to put the tops of these onto the bottoms of these, and the bottoms of these onto the tops of these. So um, we're just going to see which way works better. Um, the first thing that you want to do to prep your plants whenever you have uh, plants that you want to graft that are tomatoes, first of all, you want them to be this size or a little bit smaller, like just a couple of weeks old. And you want to make sure that you only have um, like the top two leaves on any given plant because uh, you want to reduce the amount of transpiration that's going to occur from your plant. Not completely, you want a little bit of that pole again like we talked about uh, with some of our other propagation experiments. Um, but we do want to reduce the, the loss because we are going to sever its connection to its current roots and try to talk it into making a connection with a new pair of roots on a different plant. So here we go. Um, one of the reasons why I selected these two different cultivars to do is just because it's going to make a really nice obvious example. We've got two very different leaf shapes here. So this is with the Brandywine. And this is with the Peace Fine Cherry. You can see this is a lot more lacy looking in its um, leaf shape. Uh, the Brandywine was much more entire in its leaf margin. Okay, so we're just going to trim these ones up to... And we're going to do this with 20 plants. I think I have 24, actually, of each. So we'll do this with 24 of each kind of plant. And we'll just see, um, we'll just see what works better. Um, this cherry tomato I absolutely love. Last year I got it to be uh, like 10 feet by 10 feet. It was growing right next to my chicken coop. And so it, it really tapped into that chicken nitrogen source. Um, and they took off and we had an incredibly long season with these tomatoes and they were delicious and it was like we just never stopped picking them. Since they are cherry tomatoes it's a little bit harder to make like a sauce or a salsa with them because they do have a lot of skin to them and towards the end of the season that skin gets pretty thick so uh, we juiced them as another option running through, through like a spinner shredder juicer. Okay so there we go. Now we've got these all trimmed up. Oh, maybe we'll take, nope, that's probably good. So that we only have like two or three leaves per tip, and uh, then we're gonna set ourselves up to start grafting them. One of the important pieces of equipment that you're gonna wanna use if you have, if you're gonna try to graft tomatoes are these grafting clips. Um, they make grafting clips specifically for tomatoes. I think you can also use them for peppers, but it's just like this kind of like alligator clip. And the idea is gonna be that we're gonna insert our scion and our rootstock in there and we're gonna hold it in place with this clip. Um, as the plant grows, it'll compress a little bit here and eventually we'll pull those clips off once they've healed in. I'm going to use a grafting knife uh, just because it's what I have available, but you can also use a razor blade or something else with a sharp edge. And I'm just going to pull out two of these plants. So here is my Brandywine, and here is my Peace Fine Cherry. And we're just going to line them up together here. And then we want to look on our stem and see where they're pretty much going to match in diameter. A lot of times, um, if you're doing this commercially, you really want to graft about at the cotyledon height so you want to cut your root stock off that low and the reason why is you don't really want your root stock to sucker up um, for us since this is a novelty sort of thing that we're doing um, I kind of want them to be grafted a little bit higher because I want to see if I can get both kinds of tomatoes on one plant that would be great for saving space if you're a homeowner and you don't have a lot of space or you live in an apartment and you want to get more than one kind of tomato so I can see that um, the Peace Vine Cherry is a little bit thicker than the Brandywine, so I'm going to kind of line it up, maybe like here. And I'm going to hold these stems right next to each other so that I can make one cut. And the reason why I want to do that is because if I have both stems together, when I make one cut, that angle is going to match pretty much perfectly, right? So I'm just going to line this up, 
and then I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure and cut down on an angle so I've got two nice angles of clips and then I'm going to switch my tops uh, and I'm going to clamp it together. I want to line up this green layer as much as I can and a lot of times it works best if you just kind of put the clamp on and then slide in your scion. We want to just kind of slide that into place so that we don't really see a lot of light going through there. And there we go, that is one. And so this ended up being um, Peace Vine Cherry on Brandywine, and now this is gonna be Brandywine on Peace Vine Cherry. So again, line that up, put my clip in on my rootstock first, and then clamp the scion so that it's going in the same direction. All right. And it's as easy as that. Let's do another one. Here's my Peace Vine Cherry. Here's my Brandywine. I'm going to line them up to see where they kind of match. Oh, looks like I have an extra leaf there. I'm going to cut on an angle. There we go. I'm going to switch my tops. This top goes here, this top goes here. Line this up. Put my clip on my rootstock and slide, oops, slide my scion into the tip. Commercially, when people are doing these, they can they can get kind of a rhythm and go pretty fast. I'm kind of clumsy at it, to be honest with you, because I'm pretty new to grafting tomatoes. Oh, see that one fell out, so we want to clip that a little bit higher, maybe. Get a little bit more of that scion in there. Uh, and then after we get all these um, clamped and set up like this, then we're going to put these into uh, the little greenhouse that I have that has the automatic mist. You want to make sure that you're in a very high humidity environment when you're um, healing these in. Because you want to have that transpiration loss reduced as much as possible. And you're trying to get them to go. Okay, that one's a little crooked. That's okay, here we go. Clamp, insert, slide the clamp a little bit. Oop, come on. Um, I definitely recommend wearing gloves while you're doing this because otherwise um, your finger oils are gonna get all over this stuff and you'll just clog up that vascular cambium before it has a chance to do anything at all. Oh, I see. I cut it right at a node. See, I cut it right at a node here. So the stem is actually a little bit thicker in this location than it was on the other one. There we go. Clamped and clipped. Aha! And then we'll stick it on this side. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these, and then in a couple of weeks we'll see... Uh, which one worked better or if they both worked about the same and then um, we'll have a bunch of fun tomatoes. We'll see Worst case scenario if they don't take off uh, and the scion dies off We still have a rootstock that is a delicious tomato in any case